All right, guys, welcome to part two. Uh, we're gonna get started by populating the PCB here. So we have our power supply put together and tested all inside the box. Uh, everything's ready to go on that. One thing from the previous video that I did not do, I didn't actually measure the resistors and test them before I installed them. I took a leap of faith. I've subsequently gone back and checked each one of the resistors to make sure that they did hit. In this part of the video, we're going to be doing all the resistors on the board as well. So while we do that stuff and separate everything, I'm going to be testing each resistor with the multimeter. You know, so keep this close at hand. We're going to test batches of them to make sure they fall within tolerance. As rare as it is for them to come out of the box messed up, it's still it's one of those things where if we've checked all of them, we know that we can cross that off if there's any troubleshooting to do later on. So anyway, I'm not going to sit too much in the talking part of this. It's going to be basically disassembling this, and then we're going to be focusing a lot on this main PCB, putting stuff aside. You'll see me put some stuff, put some pieces away. I've still got my small bags of screws, so I'll probably be putting things back, like these little pan screws that they have been installing. And of course, my iPad back here, which is telling me what to do. I may pop that over here. Another thing to get out when you're doing this is this sheet of paper that they give you. It's got all the components. It's got all their different indicators, their designations on the board, as well as their values and a description of what they are. So we are going to try to do all of these resistors, as well as our diodes and our trim pots, as well as our transistors. So we'll get a good section of this thing done. I'll keep it off the side as we get stuff soldered on the board. We're going to mark it off and move on. All right, so that's pretty much that. So I'm gonna to jump to the time lapse, start popping it in. You guys can watch at home. Feel free to pause and do that good stuff to examine different pieces. There's not too much things to watch out for here. It's just smart soldering, testing your stuff before you put it in. Oh, one last thing. Make sure when you're laying out your resistors, you're laying them out in, in order. They have a band, a color band that tells what they are. So there is a like left to right read on it. So the way I look at it is that whichever way the silk screen is oriented, if I read R72, you know, left to right, I want my color bands to go all the way where tolerance is on the, on, on the end of the color band indicators. So try to have all your resistors going the same way. That will also help if there's a troubleshooting issue. Okay. All right, guys, that's it. We're going to jump to the time lapse. quick interruption here. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm taking masking tape and writing down the resistance values based off this chart here and how many resistors go in each one. So I'm going to separate all the resistors, test each one, and then affix them to the masking tape here. So that way I can put them aside and they'll stay together. And as I need each one, we'll do what we need to do. Easy way to tell in the color bands, by the way, is a little app called Resistor. It looks like this. It allows you to pop in the color bands for a four band or five band resistor like this. So what I'll be doing is using resistor to decode the values that I need to find, pinpoint the resistors that we need to do that with, stick them to the tape, put them aside. And then once I have everything organized and tested, then I'll go and assemble that batch. I'm going to rinse and repeat for each one of these bags. So there's a total of four bags of resistors and there's a lot of resistors. So get a beverage, sit back, relax, enjoy the show. It's gonna be doing this a while. So we'll be doing this four times with these batches. And if you notice, I also have the daughter, bar, daughter boards up here. We're gonna go ahead and populate all the resistors, like every one that we can find across all the boards. So everything's done. 
Diodes are out of the way. That's the easy part. That's like the warm up, the appetizer. This is definitely the main course. So back to the time lapse, you'll see me take them out, test them, stick them on the tape. Find them, check them, test them, stick them on the tape. Rinse and repeat. So, ladies and gentlemen, and everything else in between, this is the end of part one of stuffing your PCB. Uh, you're probably pretty tired at this point. I got up several times to take breaks. It's a lot of work. So we're almost there. We've got the bias, the polarity, and the axiom trip chip in here, as well as all the resistors and our transistors. Um, yeah, all the, all the main, main little bits in here. Uh, when we come back around, we're going to, for part two, we're going to work on our, all our capacitors, which are polarized, which you got to pay attention to. Uh, and also our larger, like asymmetrical parts, like our input and output transformers, all that stuff, uh, as well as the JFETs and all the other pieces. Um, a couple things when we're doing this stuff, we wanted to be really careful with our transistors not to leave our soldering iron on them too long. So we get in just a tiny, tiny little bit of solder just enough to close the joint. That was it. Um, resistors not polarized. Remember what I said in the beginning about trying to orient them all the same way so that if you do have a problem, you can track down the color code and figure out what's what. Um, some basic stuff. We just want to make sure that our parts are close to our board and they're not hanging off, stuff like that. The only thing that needs a little height are our transistors here, these guys, uh, as well as like a specific resistor like this one that needed the little extra height and the lamp resistor that's on here. So there's that. Also, we got the resistors done on our attack, <coughs> excuse me, our uh, ratio PCB and the little resistors done on the attack release PCB. So we'll be coming back around to get the rest of the switches on in part two. But yeah, so take a break, pat yourself on the back if you made it this far. If you're just watching it, eating Cheetos, well, God bless you. Uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon.